So now let's go ahead and say what we want to do is um, toggle like a compact mode and get rid of basically most of all this. <coughs> That's not really too difficult. Um, again, we'll be using kind of a little bit of a different way of getting to it. But so what one thing we're going to want to do here is create a compact mode enable variable so we can tr keep track of that and thus we can just use that to just toggle um, not necessarily have to call you know disable or enable or however um, you know I still generally like to go ahead and set up separate functions in that way um, so that way when we actually have a toggle one it'll be really easy to read so let's go ahead and do a function Disable compact mode. And so for this one, we want to use um, win control, get control, and get uh, a couple controls from the main form there. Um, and then we're just going to set the visibility based on whether we're disabling or enabling. Um, so win control, control. Form. We're going to go and go with an index of zero and then set the visibility or visible. So we'll set visible to false for disable. Right now we want to set visible to true for disable because this way we're actually making those things in, you know, visible and then we're no longer in compact mode. Um, so the other control is uh, at zero. Our, um, so the first one is zero, and the second one we want to hit is at um, index of three. We could run each one of these individually and kind of test to see which one is which. I honestly don't remember, but you know, if we do both of these, it'll kind of get rid of a lot of that. Um, so the thing we want to do here is basically just set that to... Um, the opposite here so we're, since we're disabled we want to make that false um, for our enable code here pretty much much the same except we're going to kind of swap these around here and then that way we'll actually make it you know not visible and not visible and then we're going to say compact mode is in fact enabled um, and then like I said let's go ahead and set up a, a toggle function here and then this one's pretty straightforward we just want to check that compact mode enabled if it's not um, or actually if it is we want to disable first and then if it's not in compact mode already we want to enable compact mode and here we can go ahead and get this ready to pop in there and test So if we execute that, we can see we've gone into this compact mode and then make sure we don't reset everything. If we toggle that again or run that again, we can just toggle back and forth with that now. Um, so again, let's go ahead and pop this in our Lua script here. And then that one, you may not always want to run you may want to actually set it up so that way you have it you know we might even want to say um, come on up here and make a release release mode and set that to false at first and then from there we just want to go ahead and set it up so we say if in release mode and this we might even want to say enable enable compact mode and then that way if we're not in release mode it's not going to enable it um, 
and that's just one one way to set this up but um, I know for me the disable header sorting is something I kind of always want done um, whereas compact mode obviously when we're first working on this table we may want to be able to go ahead and have this script run and um, auto attach and all that stuff and even disable this header sorting but we don't necessarily want to always go straight into compact mode and then this way again when you go to release the table you'll just have to make sure you in your versioning or whatever go ahead and set that to true and then you'll be ready to run it with compact mode enabled um, and that way when that person loads up their table that's what it'll just automatically do and so from here kind of the next thing we can do we can even set it up so this way we'll add a, a menu item up here in the main menu that'll pop up and then that way we can set it up so the user can choose to toggle compact mode or even if there's an error and they need to go back in and be able to search for something and kind of help us find what's going on you know do an AOB scan or whatever the case may be um, so we'll go ahead and set that up and we'll make it a function as well we'll just say add compact mode menu So this one we're going to want a name for it. And let's just go ahead and go menu item, a cheat table, compact mode. And then just so this way, say for some reason we've already created it or something, I just tend to like to. <coughs> search for that item see if it's in the list if it's not in the menu already then we'll create it um, so from here we're just going to want to go ahead and start setting up our um, menu item Again, let's go ahead and explicitly set it to nil. Um, so for this, we're going to want a loop, but it's going to be a zero-based index, and what we're going to want to be looping through, and it's going to be of the main form um, menu items. count and then like I said it's um the count won't be zero base so we're going to want to do minus one of that to keep from getting it out of bounds or an index out of bounds error um, so from here this is where we're going to want to go ahead and it's it's not really completely necessary this whole loop here we're going to be doing but um again I like to be explicit this way if this ever gets ran again it won't really come up with any issues So if we do that main form dot menu dot items then at the index of I and check to see if the name is equal to the name we're going to be setting it to later if it doesn't exist and then that way we can even go ahead and get this and do something if we needed to we really don't need to do that in this case but again it can be useful sometimes and then here we'll just go ahead and break out of our loop here if it does exist uh, so from here is where we're going to want to actually set it and basically we'll just check for nil and this way if it goes through the entire list or the all the menu items and doesn't find this menu item compact mode or menu item cheat table compact mode name um, then we're going to go ahead and create it because basically it, in theory it doesn't exist so to create it we're going to want to just set it with um, create menu item
So here, <clears throat> we're going to want to go ahead and give it a parent item. Um, this will mainly be for garbage cleanup. So main form to uh, menu. And then after that, we're just going to want to go ahead and set the name and the caption. So let's do MI compact mode dot name equals name. Compact mode uh, caption, um, and uh, there are a lot of languages where this would be text, but in um, Lua or well, at least with Cheat Engine, and I think it basically has to do with Lazarus. You'll also find a lot of other languages that use caption instead of text. Um, but let's go ahead and set that to toggle compact mode. So another thing I like to do, go ahead and come on up here, and we'll create a local variable t, and we're just going to make that the translate function. Um, from this point, we don't really need to worry too much about what translate actually does. Um, the main thing to understand is it just kind of looks up other strings based on the string you pass it. Um, I'm going to use, you know, translate files, but it's uh, a few languages I've dealt with actually do have a, you know, a shorthand for translate, so I tend to always like to make that. Um, not completely necessary, but it does just make it a little more robust. Um, and work, you know, if somebody does have that set up in their cheat engine, you know, to have a translate folder and they've actually translated that and dealt with that, then that can actually help other users to not have to you know, Google Translate something real basic like that. Um, so here we're going to want to set our on click function. And then that we're just going to actually want to go ahead and set it to that toggle compact mode from our table. Um, and then here one thing we're going to want to make sure is while the, this creates the menu item, um, setting its parent doesn't actually necessarily nest it within the menu. All that does is just set it so this way if the main menu is destroyed or garbage collected, this will automatically know to go ahead and do it as well. Um, here, compact mode. Oh, no. Main form dot menu dot items dot add menu item compact mode um, so that way we actually add this menu item we've created to the menu it's more or less what we're doing there um, let's close cheat engine let's go ahead and get that back open and just so this thing ain't flashing at me and bothering me let's go ahead and open and close that real quick, the tutorial itself. So then just to test we can go ahead and run and execute this and then we can see we've actually added our, to our toggle compact mode menu item and this way you can just click on that. So this way even if we are in release mode and it's this way a user can just quickly click on that and then start helping with finding something or doing whatever the case may be. Um, so here this one will basically want to just take that in its entirety and stick that on in the Lua script. Um, we'll leave it here. We can even go ahead and pop this on down here to help make that a little more explicit that we're going to enable combat mode right off the bat. And again, this, I'd actually tend to prefer to move it on up towards the top. But then this will have us pretty well set up. Um, so that way our, you know, we've got our, all of our Lua stuff ready and then we're, we're not going to be doing any header sorting. Um, we can toggle our compact mode and... And so that's kind of it for this one. I'll leave this back up here for just a second. Um, kind of not really sure what's in store, but hope you enjoyed these this series here.